Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for thir Wednesday, excuse me, Wednesday, September 4th, 2019. Please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Keep in mind that energies are fluid and time is an illusion. Yes, so just because this is dated for, this is a message dated for the 4th of September, it doesn't have to resonate on the 4th. At any moment, whenever you're watching this and it resonates for you, then that is the message for you at that time. Yeah? Um, so pretty heavy energies today. Uh, and it's interesting because I remember I'm still, still having a, a period of pretty vivid and strong dreams. Um, they weren't so scary last night, actually. They were actually pretty, I felt I was very happy in them, you know, and then, and then I woke up and I woke up in this really heavy, depressive energy. Um, so uh, I don't know if anyone else is dealing with that, but I mean, it has, I, I'm going to be honest, I do feel like, um, and this is actually coming out in the pre-shuffle that I have here for us, but I, I, I do feel like Virgo season and all of the planets moving through Virgo at the same time and blah, blah, blah. I don't know if they're still there, um, but I know at one point, um, at, at one point we had like, what, five planets in Virgo or something like that. Um, and it may still, I think it might still be going on as of the 4th, which is today, the day that I'm recording this, but um, it's a, there's a lot of focus. There's a heavy, heavy focus on trajectory, specifically career trajectory for many of us, or just the direction we want to go, the things that we want to be harvesting or manifesting in our lives. Um, also, fall energy is coming through very, very strongly. Um, I felt it yesterday and today, both yesterday and yesterday morning and this morning while I was doing my uh, morning meditation and whatnot. Um, and yesterday I thought it was just the, because I've been listening to some uh, meditation music as I, you know, as I do my thing in the morning. And I thought it was just the music that I was listening to. But today I listened to a, a completely different one and it was the same feeling. Okay, fall is absolutely creeping up on us. But with that comes a little bit of a depression, um, which is kind of icky. But so then, okay, with that said, getting into our pre-shuffle here. Uh, it started, it, and it literally was just uh, a chunk of cards that fell out all at once, and the Eight of Swords was on the top of that pile, okay? But you see here, it's this side of, this, uh, of the card where we see that she's not so tightly bound. If we were to look at this side, okay, it would be, she's like completely bound, she can't get out, you know, she's stuck, whatnot, whatever, but on this side, we see it's actually not as tight as you think. She literally could shimmy out of that. Those are so loose, okay? So what this is what this is saying to me is there is an energy for us or for whomever I'm channeling for or whomever this is resonating with. There is an energy of releasing yourself from some sort of uh, confinement. And I'm hearing social norms, okay? So this could have a lot to do with public opinion, with the opinions of others. Um, how you are, I guess, expected to show up, um, how you may be required to show up. Um, and those requirements aren't, oh, well, those are requirements or expectations may not resonate with you or with who you are or with who you've grown to be or even the direction you're really looking to go in. In life okay um, and I, that does feel like it's coupled with the tower the tower did come out here okay um, also with the ace of Pentacles so there is a brand new start here you know that is there's a new physical opportunity maybe even a new job a new career path or just a new path in life, a new physical existence, a new way of expressing yourself, a new way of showing up in life, which all of that could be indicative of the Ace of Pentacles here. All right, take it as it resonates. This is a general reading, um, but it absolutely has to do with, and I, I just heard it very clearly, it has to do with dismantling the past. 
all right? So if you are feeling a heavy energy right now, um, and it's so perfect, it's so, it's so perfect that it would be happening as we're entering into fall season um, here in the U.S., uh, northern hemisphere even you know we're moving towards fall uh, summer is is coming to an end I believe the fall equinox is on the 21st of September somewhere something like that on this in the southern hemisphere like down in I know there are quite a few people down in Australia that watch hi guys um, but you know down there I think you guys are moving into spring or something um, so you know for us here in the northern hemisphere it's kind of perfect that this would be happening during the fall season or we're entering into the fall season because now, you know, uh, nature is kind of starting to enter into a hibernation phase. You know, the trees are going to start losing all their leaves. We're going to go into winter. You know, the animals are going to go start going into hibernation. You know, this is this is a time of death sure decay sure um but change okay for those of you in the in the in the in the southern hemisphere um it does kind of fit with spring um if this is resonating with you um because new life is coming into play you know you you're coming out of winter and you're coming out of a a like a hibernation type energy and it's time for you to start emerging. For So for some of you, this could be you absolutely getting started on something brand new, all right? Um, I will say overall energy is the Knight of Wands with all that lightning and the Seven of Pentacles. Now, both of these cards, actually three of these cards, well, f well the Magician made an appearance yesterday, but um, the Tower, the Eight of Swords, I believe the Eight of Swords, was it the Eight of Swords? I don't remember actually, but I know the Knight of Wands and the Seven of Pentacles came out yesterday. Now the Seven of Pentacles came out yesterday, it was the other side, okay? It was this side of the card, right? Here, it's this side. Today, it's this side. And so we're really looking at our harvest. We're looking at what we have developed, what is apparent in our lives, what is present in front of us right now, and whether or not it fits into where we see ourselves going in the future. Okay, Under, uh, 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 and as well, <laughs> as well, we have justice and the magician. So in terms of, and it's look at, it's this side of justice, which um, shows that there may have been some justice, injustices that have been running amok, we will say lately. But I do see with this magician energy that, um, there is an effort or there is an opportunity to manifest something new in the face of some sort of injustice. Now, these injustices feel more like um, people doing things or pursuing things in their lives, careers specifically, I just heard, pursuing careers, um, expressing themselves in ways that are not in alignment with who they truly are. There's very much an energy with this eight of swords. There's, there's very much an energy of releasing yourself from some sort of conformity or some sort of idea of who you are or what you're meant to be doing that actually doesn't really align with you, that you don't really feel all that passionate about anymore, okay? We do have the Knight of Wands here, but it's the Knight of Wands, it's, it's, it's an energy in which there is new inspiration coming, which is what, I, what is indicative of this, this, these strokes, of these strikes of lightning, okay? The bolts of lightning here. Um, and it's almost as if these, this lightning is stopping this Knight of Wands in his tracks. It's kind of what I'm feeling with this, all right? It's kind of stopping, either stopping him in his tracks or slowing him down or influencing him, well, ultimately, is influencing him to change his course, change his direction, change his direct, uh, trajectory, okay? All right, especially with the tower here. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised, and it's so funny because this is exactly how I'm kind of feeling right now, but exactly how I'm kind of feeling. Come on, Eric, what kind of grammar is that? <laughs> anyway, um, what I'm experiencing right now is finding that there are certain elements to my life 
and certain things that I used to resonate with that I don't resonate with anymore. And I'm finding that those, those elements to my past that I used to resonate with, I find them to be quite hollow now. And look at this, the tower, it's hollow. <laughs> it's hollow. Mm. Excuse me, guys, my nose is flaring up, but um, it's hollow. And then you have the two sphinxes here. I've never really described, explained this, but you have these two sphinxes here that are um, from the chariot, okay? And you see you have, I don't know if you guys can actually see that, but the, there's the chariot right there in, uh, in shambles at the base of the tower. And the two sphinxes have been released from the chariot, from the from the chains or the 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 um, the stirrups, I guess you could call it, uh, not the stirrups. I don't know, what, whatever whatever you would use to attach a horse to a carriage or whatnot. The reins, um, it's released from. They're released from the reins, and now they're just kind of going in their own direction, individually. They're no longer working together, and that's kind of what this energy is right now you know it's almost it's a bit chaotic i'm not gonna lie it is a bit chaotic because it's just at least what i'm feeling and this could be and i definitely could be picking up on some some collective energy here but it just feels like things are coming to a close things are coming to a a, a, a halt um and there really is no real direction real guidance or real togetherness oh lord i'm gonna sneeze um there's real really no real togetherness here Ooh, ten of wands you know it it just feels like a very chaotic energy like we're all just kind of going in all these different directions not really sure of where we want to be going but just kind of like going through the motions Ooh, sorry guys i have to pause for a second uh, i was fine but now all of a sudden i'm having <laughs> I'm having an allergy attack. So hold on just a moment. Um, give me just a second. Let me handle this. And then we will get started with the rest of the reading, okay? Okay, that's better. Um, I do want to say before I move any f move forward anymore, we do have this ten of wands here now, um, and underneath is this is the king of pentacles. Yes, this is the king of pentacles, king of pentacles, with the ten of wands, and this is actually really really perfect, um, because what I was as I was handling my allergy attack, I was getting a message um, from spirit saying, you know what, just. Don't tr don't try too hard to really make anything happen right now. Just go through the motions, experience experience what you are feeling, and take some time to really release yourself of the burdens. And it's interesting because with this side of the Ten of Wands here, you have this stone figure. It looks just like this individual that's carrying these wands. Now I haven't read what this card means officially in this book for this deck. However, I'm going intuitively and I'm seeing this stone figure as like this past individual, okay? A representation of who this person was in the past. And this person is now continuing to carry all these burdens from the past that no longer resonate with him or her, all right? It doesn't matter. Um, and on this side, we do have the King of Pentacles looking off into the distance figuring out okay what is it what is it that i want to do what is my environment what is my domain what does my success look like what does my prosperity look like how am i garnering these things what am i doing with this why am i carrying these burden burdens when i feel like i shouldn't be any longer well it's a really good question Oh, <laughs> okay. With that said, let's get on to the rest of the reading here. One more shuffle. All right. 
Here we go. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Wednesday, September 4th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. Five shuffles. All right, I'm gonna give this five shuffles for us today, and then we will get into it and see what we've got. One. Two, four, the collective. Wednesday, September 4th, 2019. Best messages, please, Spirit for our hump day. Happy hump day, guys. Four. Is that four and this is five? I guess so. And five, I guess. Yes, this, uh, it doesn't matter. That was the last shuffle. All right, here we go, guys. Let's see what we've got for today. Wednesday, September 4th. Best messages, please, spirit. I'm going to shuffle one more time. Wednesday, September 4th. Best messages, please, Spirit. Okay, that's enough after this. There we go. All right. Wow. Okay. So overall energy, we have the moon on one side and the ace of cups on the other. Now the Ace of Cups today is dev is giving me an energy of internal self-love, okay? Um, okay, we'll get to that in a second. But we do have the moon, uh, which on this side of the card, we have the figure of the High Priestess that and she, this is the high priestess uh, um, in this deck. However, she's naked, obviously, but she bears wisdom. She bears information. And what I'm getting, especially with the side of the card that we have here, you have the towers on here, but you can see that these towers are in fact hollow. So what the, the energy here is is feeling like is this high priestess is coming forward and saying, okay, now, Throughout all of your trials and tribulations, what have you learned here? Uh, and the first thing I heard after asking that question is to love yourself more. Ace of Cups, okay? But let's get into this. We have Judge, oh, nope, not Judgment, The Lovers. Okay. Ooh. Interesting. It's interesting because I am seeing, when I first saw this, I did see this as a bit of a judgment energy, but it was mainly because of the angel that was in between these two, okay? You have the Four of Swords, you have the Page of Cups with the Ace of Swords. Page of Cups did come out yesterday. Nine of Swords, we have the Chariot. We have the Page of Wands and the Two of Swords. All right. Um, there is a lot of contradictory energy here, but it makes a lot of sense. It makes a whole lot of sense. Um, so with the lovers, okay, we have a choice. We have a choice, I hear a choice that's being made. Um, and it's absolutely over uh, a choice between vice or virtue, okay? Vice being the desires of everyone else, virtue being the desires of your own heart your own soul, your own body, your own essence, your own being, okay? The light today is kind of darkish. I'm sorry about that, guys. Anyway, um, it is pretty cloudy outside. But anyway, the lovers is in the very center. And it is asking you to choose wisely as to what it is you wish to do. Where are you moving, okay? What it is you want to do. Ace of Swords with the Page of Cups 
is the dreamer energy. The, ace, the, the page of cups is the dreamer energy. And it is, in fact, this side of the card that came out yesterday, too, with the turtle here. The turtle is absolutely representing wisdom. It also represents slow and steady. Like, turtles, unless they're swimming, turtles don't move very quickly on land. All right? So I'm getting an energy of needing to just move very slowly. Slow and steady wins the race here. No one's asking you to rush anything. And to be quite honest, turtle energy is saying right now that trying to rush things is not going to get you there any faster. Trying to rush things is only going to uh, leave open space for error. Okay. Ace of Swords is communication, is the aha moment, is the epiphany. All right. But here, I feel like the energy or the wisdom that would come through, the epiphany, the understanding that would come through with this Ace of Swords is kind of being blocked by your anxiety. There is definitely a need to meditate right now especially with the Four of Swords, okay? There's a need to meditate here because if you look at this side of the Four of Swords, outside this person's window is, a bur is something burning. That could, you could see that as the forest burning. You could see that as the town burning. What I'm, I'm kind of seeing it as... I mean, I, don't, I can't really see any buildings here, all right? But what I felt, the first, time, the first thing I felt when this card came out was the town burning, the establishment burning. All of the things that have been established are burning, okay? Um, it's coming down. It's changing, right? And there's a lot of anxiety because of it. This is personal anxiety. There's, what I'm feeling is fear here. I'm feeling like people are like saying, well, but if I don't, continue to do these things that I once did in the past, that I once pursued in the past, what are people gonna think? What, how, how am I gonna survive? Blah, blah, what not, whatever. <laughs> no, a new way is coming. A new form of expression for you is coming. A new idea is coming. A new understanding is coming. A new direction even. But you're needing to meditate through this time of dismantling, or should I say dismantlement? Is that a term, dismantlement? <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. But you see here, now let's go to this side. We have the chariot, okay, which of which the sphinxes did appear in the tower energy, right? We also have the page of wands and we have the two of swords. The two of swords. Now, the Two of Swords is very similar, is a, is a very similar energy to the Four of Swords and the Nine of Swords over here in the sense that now is a time to, to, just, to just go within, okay? Because with this Page of Wands energy, I do see the Page of Wands as a card of self-discovery, which is um, like the Minor Arcana version of the Hermit, yes? And on this side of the card, we do have a Phoenix from the Ash, from this bush here, rising okay so it's like we have a new form of you you have a new form of you that's that's rising out of the ashes okay and you have a new direction and w what i'm getting with this side of the chariot card is that you have a new direction that you are aligning with that you are in the process of aligning with so taking action right now is not necessary may not even be possible Okay, let me not say that. It is possible, but it's not the best idea at the moment, probably. Because you're still trying to figure out how to express it, two of swords. This is, this is what I'm seeing with the two of swords here, is that you are looking off to the moon here, looking for guidance. You're looking in, using your intuition, looking within, trying to figure out how to move forward. This Two of Swords does not feel like a bad thing. Okay, you can say it's a blockage, sure, but it doesn't feel like a bad thing. But where people are getting tripped up here is in the anxiety and not allowing themselves to just sit with the energy and meditate your way through it. Work on gaining a conscious understanding of what is happening for you. You don't have to understand everything, but start to get a conscious 
understanding of your current mental state, your mindscape, your emotional state. Okay, what is it you're experiencing? What is it that, that you're feeling? What are the energies that you're moving through right now? Instead of allowing yourself to sink into anxiety, anxiety over it, work to understand it. You don't have to understand it completely and fully, but work to get some sort of general or working understanding of what it is you are moving through right now. What are you aligning with right now? I, I, and I am getting a bit of a, a judgment energy from the lovers here. Judgment being a, a, a second chance or a higher calling or a wake up call. But I believe it's coming through as the lovers because you are getting into a greater alignment with yourself. You're getting greater in tune with yourself. Okay. Okay. So let's move to some clarification here. And I do actually, in fact, I do want to clarify the lovers. We're going to start with that and then we'll see. We'll see. We'll see from there. And um, I do feel like I want to get Oracle Guidance. I do want to close out Oracle Guidance with the dragons today. All right. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Okay. And that, actually, you know what? That makes perfect sense in terms of the fact that I bought the dragon deck to work, to help work with masculine energies. Um, and this is very masculine. This energy that we're in right now, this feels very masculine because it's taking into account the action that we want to be taking in life. Excellent. All right. One last shuffle, and then let's clarify this. the lovers here. What is this alignment that you are coming into? Let's see. What is this alignment, please, Spirit? <laughs> okay. Well, ooh. Okay. Ah, overall energy, the moon. We have a card that fell off the table here. Three of cups, three of swords, the emperor. We have the fool, the page of wands, the two of wands, the five of cups. We have justice in reverse, and we have the page of swords in reverse. All right. So yes, we are definitely taping, taking a leap of faith here. We are moving in a new direction. In all honesty, what this feels like here is a need to change direction, to change course, because what we have experienced in the past uh, was disappointing. Three of cups in reverse, three of swords, upright, five of cups, upright. What I'm feeling here is whatever you had been pursuing, whatever you had been going for in the past, whatever direction that you felt like was right for you or what you needed to be moving towards or what the path that you needed to be moving on, I feel like it was influenced, heavily influenced by others. And it wasn't really truly in alignment with what your heart wanted. It was something that made you socially accepted. Socially acceptable. But that led to heartbreak and disappointment. Okay? But you see, the beauty about this, what, I, what I'm seeing in this Five of Cups energy is the Three of Cups is reversed. Right. The official Three of Cups card is reversed. The three cups on this five of cups here that could represent the three of cups is spilled out. And all you have left are the two of cups. The two of cups being your own inner sense of balance of union, your own inner bond, your own inner balance of masculine and feminine energy. 
whatever it is that you experienced here in this energy from the past has brought you an opportunity to find greater alignment. I want you to see the two cups that are still standing uh, in greater alignment with yourself, which is exactly what we're talking about here with the lovers. Okay. You have the emperor with the fool, the page of wands and the two of wands. So someone has taken their power back. And yes, we absolutely are talking masculine energy right now. The emperor, what direction do you want to move in? What action do you want to take? Page of Wands, again, a card of self-discovery, understanding yourself better, choosing a new direction, taking a leap of faith in terms of the new element of yourself that you have come to understand or that you are coming to understand, okay? I like that a lot. The moon coming out twice um, does represent the new moon, okay? So I do feel like this, was star this started during the actual new moon, and we're still feeling through this. And what I'm feeling here is this period between this last f new moon that we had, which I believe was last Friday, into the full moon that we have, which I think is like on the 12th or the 13th of September. But this period from new moon to full moon is a time for you to really go within and start listening to yourself, listening to your heart, listening to your inner child even, listening to what it is that you're feeling, listening to your emotions, understanding what you're feeling. And then as you get to that new moon, I'm sorry, as you get to the full moon, then you can really release. This is a period of building up to a big, big release. This, this is what I'm feeling, okay? Now, I want to talk about, whoops, I want to talk about this over here. Now, the two of wands just was just thrown off the table by accident. Um, but I do feel like it has something to do with this pile over here. We have the Nine of Swords, the Four of Swords in reverse, the Ace of Swords with the Page of Cups, right? But then Clarifiers came out, Justice in reverse, and the Page of Swords in reverse. And I'm not quite exactly sure of what this means. I kind of, I get, first of all, I get the feeling that maybe we are, I don't know, asking too many questions. With the Page of Swords in reverse, maybe not asking enough questions, maybe not asking the right questions. But then with the justice in reverse here, I'm getting more of an energy of the injustice that came out in the beginning, in the, in the pre-shuffle. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to use our, which one? The Lenormand deck. All right. Instead of using, I was going to use the Dreaming Way Tarot, but instead of that, I'm actually going to use the Lenormand deck because it is a different structure. It can give us some different insight. So let's talk about this injustice here with the Page of Swords. It's almost as if, oh, oh, I get it now. There really isn't anything else to know about this injustice, to be quite honest. There's nothing else to seek. There's nothing else to find out. You know quite well what this injustice is for you. Ace of Swords. You know quite clearly what this injustice is for you. With the Page of Cups energy also, I'm feeling, I'm feeling like, because the Page of Cups is also a, um, 
what is it the word I'm looking for uh, uh, is uh, oh, oh, reconciliation apologies but it's almost as if you're not even looking for any sort of apology or reconciliation anymore all right you're you you know the truth you know the facts of the matter and it's like instead of instead of focusing on the past you're now kind of or at least you're needing to focus on the future here Meditation is still necessary because that's going to help you calm these fears with the Nine of Swords. You may be, there may be some sort of blockage in any, in some sort of justice for some of you by trying too hard or seeking too hard is the first thing I heard, okay? All right, uh, so let's just get a little more clarification here. Actually, for this. For the just for justice and the page of swords, both in reverse here. What are these? What is this, spirit? What is this, please? Ooh, ooh, yeah. Look, the snake with the messenger, <laughs> and the two of them make seventeen. <laughs> Underneath the deck is the sun. Now, in the Lenormand deck. The snake is not a good thing. Talking, I mean, snake in the grass type energy, right? Um, and what I'm getting with this is this, you see how this snake is here in this, in this tree full of fruit, right? So I'm, what I'm seeing is somebody being led with the messenger here somebody being led into i heard an obstacle course all right but into some sort of I, i'm getting a, like a a pipe dream energy or a bait and switch type energy only to find that there was a snake in the waiting in the grass all along to 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 get you and it and it could be it could be poisonous it could be destructive but what i'm getting is more of um, entrapment, okay? But with the sun here, it seems that you have reached some sort of illumination. And in the fact that these, I mean, one and seven make eight, okay? But you could also see this as 17. So what I'm seeing with this, with 17 being an energy of the star, right? The star in the traditional tarot represents healing, represents wish fulfillment. I feel like this energy that you are coming out of now, or yes, okay, we'll say that we are coming out of, out of, out of as a collective, for those of us that resonate with this, whatever was in the past here could be seen as a blessing in disguise because it led you to understand things on a much deeper level. For some of you, maybe you got bit by the snake. Maybe the snake got you. And now you're seeing the danger in the situation. Okay. Not, don't beat yourself up about that. Because if you got bit by the snake, you were, it was necessary for you, for your, for your journey. All right? Please do not beat yourself up about that. For those of you that didn't necessarily get bit by the snake you just saw it and you're like holy shit what is that and you got up out of there okay excellent either way whatever happened here was necessary for your path and you're going in the right direction moving forward do okay I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna do one more pull from the Lenormand, and then we're gonna close the reading with our oracle guidance. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. So um, we have the moon again. <laughs> All right, the moon has come out three times. Here, 
The moon is talking about cycles, it's talking about understanding, it's talking about the flow of life. This is card number 32, which boils down to a five. Okay, that's change. Here I'm getting an energy of the cycles of the moon. So again, this period between the new moon to the full moon, and um, don't quote me on those date, the date of the full moon. I think it's like around the 12th or the 13th, but definitely check on that. Um, this cycle right now, especially be, and, and it makes so much sense because we're in Virgo season. This is a time of planning. This is a time for understanding. This is a time of working smarter, not harder. This cycle is very important for clearing your path. So in terms of working smarter, not harder, and Betsy said this, she said this to me uh, in her pop-up video that she did a reading for me for. She said this in the daily, was it yesterday? Two days ago, in her daily reading two days ago, working smarter, not harder is very important. So for you, if that means taking time to just rest, to sit with yourself, to sit with your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings, to meditate, to take time away, to go into a little bit of a hermit mode, do that, okay? So then we also have card number 12 here, which is something, which is a card that I've never seen before. Um, it is birds. It's a flock of birds at, a, at their birdhouse. I'm getting a sense of community here. This almost feels like coming back to a sense of community, coming back to soul family. I'm definitely getting an energy of soul family here. Coming back to, in essence, where you belong, energetically speaking. And I do want to say, I feel, I feel it's very important to say that this is not an energy of, uh, you don't belong here, get out of here, man. It's not about that. It's more about where do you belong energetically in the sense of what resonates with you? What form of expression? How do you want to show up in the world? How does that resonate with you? But we're going to read this officially. That was just my intuitive channeling of that. But I do want to see what the book has to say about this card. Birds. A phone call, a text, or a date. This is how I communicate. I am in meetings or interviews. I like to negotiate. I can be your sibling, lover, or mate. Couples is what I indicate. This card may be symbolic of jabber, gossip, or passing of information of a positive kind, as ever dependent on the cards in which, a com uh, which company this... Uh, I'm sorry. in which company it is found, okay? Many voices together are louder than one. It is also the modern card of crowdsourcing or mass communication. It can be as simple as an announcement that travels quickly or is distributed wild, widely, especially with the writer, which is what we got here. This too is the ever-growing world of Facebook and Twitter communication. The card can mean literal tweeting. There may, however, be miscommunication with the Chinese whispers effect. In fairy tales, characters are sometimes given the ability to understand the language of birds, and it can be that the card signifies a misunderstanding, particularly combined with a, the birch. But, okay, so in terms of that, this actually could, especially with what I was picking up on before, this absolutely could be an energy of miscommunication, misalignment, I'm just getting, I'm getting an energy of tr working to align yourself with something that doesn't necessarily fit with you. And there could be energies of gossip, miscommunication in terms of not wanting to be the, I don't know, the brunt of that gossip. And thus conforming so that you, quote, fit in with the crowd. Maybe that's not the crowd you're really meant to be, quote, fitting in with. It's interesting. All right, so now we're going to close our reading with Oracle Guidance from the Dragons, yes? In this period, in this time of needing to work 
smarter, not harder. What advice, what guidance do, does the dragons, or do the dragons, I don't know what the proper grammar there would be, but what advice do the dragons have for us? Yes, do the dragons have for us? One last shuffle. I mean, you guys, it literally, it literally feels like fall to me right now. Like, I, 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 I feel like we should be, like, here in the States, we should be um, preparing for Thanksgiving or something. And I know I completely, I totally, <laughs> I totally skipped Halloween, but that's just the energy. I'm getting straight up November, like all, all, like damn near all the leaves of the trees are gone. You know, there, there, there's, you know, leaf piles everywhere. Like that's the, that's what I'm feeling right now. And it actually, it was an image of the leaves having fallen off the trees and, you know, that I was seeing. So it's almost as if we are, yes, we're shedding, I, I literally just heard we are shedding our old beliefs right now. And I just saw 45, 55 on the counter. Absolutely. So 555, five, five, change, yes, but four being stability and guidance from the angels, from the angelic realms, even from source. Wow, all right. So what guidance do you have for us, dear dragons, in this time of change, in this time of molting, yes? Of shedding our old beliefs. One card is enough. Lilac Fire Dragon. And this is a card that we got the last time I used this deck. Lilac Fire Dragon. Transmutes through the power of love. Open up to transcendent love and enlightenment. Purity of heart brings peace, hope, and joy. I, I, I was told that one is enough. Um, however, I do kind of feel like I want to pull more, so we'll see. I believe this is a ninth dimensional dragon. No, it's a fifth dimensional dragon. Oh, the fifth dimension, yep. Okay, 44. Maybe we'll pull another. We'll see. I'm not sure yet. I'm feeling generous. I'm gonna I'm gonna read the guidance. When you choose a when you choose this card, a lilac fire dragon will touch you with incredible ninth dimensional light. So call it in and ask it to touch you. As it approaches you, breathe in divine love and sense the lilac fire enveloping you. This will enable you to let go of the old easily, calmly, and graciously. Notice particularly how you feel when this dragon touches you and sense the purity of the love that it radiates. Ask this dragon to remain with you to anchor the glorious light of the lilac fire and take you into a new and illuminated way Wait, not illuminated, illumined, I-L-L-U-M-I-N-E-D. Illumined, that's interesting, I didn't know that was a word. Uh, an illumined way of being. When you do this, the love radiating from your heart will become purer and more powerful. People will sense this and respond with trust, respect, and gratitude. Consciously work with this beautiful dragon and notice the difference it makes, in, makes to your life and the quality of love around you. Okay, I am going to pull one more card. Just one more. Ooh, 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 this is gorgeous. Pure white dragon from Orion transforms your ascension knowledge into pure wisdom. Process what you know, act with truth and honesty, let your wings of light grow and expand. Now, both of these are violet in color, all right? And even as I was reading the lilac fire dragon, I was getting an energy of the fires, the, the, the violet flame, or fires of trans, transmutation, transformation, which would be the violet flame. So you might want to work with the violet flame through this period. It is absolutely a beautifully powerful transformative energy. I used, I used to use the violet flame energy a lot. 
This is the pure white dragon from Orion. This is a seventh dimensional dragon. All right, so let's get, read the guidance here and then we're gonna close out the reading. A pure white dragon from Orion has come to you today to advise you to examine what you know with enlightened eyes. Process any information you are working with through your right brain to discover how to use it for the highest good. The high frequency dragons from Orion will be with you to help you with this process. They will allow you to advance to your spiritual growth and expand, I'm sorry, they will allow you to advance your spiritual growth and expand your wings of light. When you hold white in your aura, people trust and respect you. This card calls on you to speak your truth, act with honesty, and be totally honorable in all of your dealings. Wow, that's pretty perfect. <sighs> and actually, Orion was always one of my favorite constellations. I feel a very strong connection with Orion, and even as I was reading that, I just felt this wash of like loving energy. It was beautiful. All right, guys, so there you have it. Five, five, five on the counter again. This was a little bit of a longer one, but hey, it matters. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys have a great day, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye.